Hello, beautiful, intergalactic, multidimensional spirits being humans. Maria here. Um, just jumping on for a few minutes. Well, we'll see how long this goes. I always think it's going to be short and then I get yapping. Um, but just feeling guided right now to jump on real quick um, to talk about being real and what being real um, feels like and what it means to me as I'm continuing to navigate this insane individual and collective human evolution process that we're all um, going through, whether we're aware of it or not. And I'm really learning about um, being real. And it's funny because the majority of my life, I sort of believed that, um, well, let me have, let me think of how to word it. Like being real was, was, was a paradigm in my life in the sense that I would look externally and, um, see everybody for their fakeness. We'll say, um, I believed that most people were, um, kind of just walking around in a facade, but I believed myself to be real. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. Um, I still believe most of us are walking around with a facade, but as I continue to awaken, I realize I myself was also very much in a facade of, of um, believing that I was real all the time, right? Now that I'm really understanding what real feels like to me, um, I was lying to myself, right? And so I just feel like it's important to kind of just jump on and um, express my perception of what it feels like now to really step into being real. Or another word I like to call is authentic, my authentic self, right? And for me, while I'm walking this earth plane, being authentic means um, integrating both aspects of me. So that is that spirit sense, the, the light, the eternal part of me um, that never dies, it never goes anywhere. It's always in existence, um, no matter what physical plane, no matter what avatar skin suit I'm walking around in. Um, so there's that spirit part of me that is very much me, right? I feel that is my truest essence. But then there's also the human part of me that is talking to you right now, the Maria Jingress version that's walking this earth plane, which is also an aspect of me, right? Every incarnation is an aspect of me. It, um, every experience really, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm having a hard time finding words this morning, um, which tells me not really my thinking brain, which is good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I digress. Um, to me, every human experience I've had, and maybe not even just human, but we'll stick with the human experiences for now, has um, altered my, my light body, my spirit, my soul, right? That's why we all have different soul blueprints, because we've experienced different incarnations. So that is what makes us unique. Although we all, I believe that we all do come from one single source. Um, we've all chosen different paths to walk, different roles to play, different avatars to jump into. Thus we have different soul blueprints, right? That's what makes us really unique. So as I'm learning this whole process of being real, I'm understanding that means integrating my spirit self that is very aware of all of my other incarnations, as well as owning what I'm going through as Maria Jingris. And that really comes down to honoring, accepting and expressing all of my feelings, my emotions, and also my thoughts, right? Because even though a lot of those aspects of the Maria Jingris have come from external sources, um, cause we talk about how very conditioned and programmed our brains are right on the human, on the, uh, on the earth plane and the human body. So even though, um, the source of a lot of those energies may have come from something outside of me, I also understand we're all interconnected. Um, so it's, it's an illusion to believe that it came from outside of me, 
um, I allowed it into my energetic space. So I own it, right? Whether the thoughts were originally my own or not, I somehow allowed them into this avatar and I've allowed them to control me. And the same thing with my emotions. I may feel other people's emotions. Um, I absolutely feel other people's emotions. But if I'm allowing them into my energetic space, they become mine. I own them, right? And they're also triggering some kind of an emotion inside of me. So being real to me is being able to acknowledge this, that this is part of the human journey that we, we really wanted to come down and experience, as crazy as that might sound sometimes when we're going through what we perceive to be very tough times, painful times, suffering times, right? Like why, why would we ever choose that? And the way I've understood it through my higher self, my guides, is that because it's, it's the experience of it, that's where we gain wisdom. We don't gain wisdom from other people's teachings. We gain it from our own walks of life. So that's why I do understand that we've all chosen some very challenging experiences from a human perspective to grow, to learn, and to share with other people. Um, so being real. Yeah, it's, it's to me such an important aspect of um, healing and growing because it's also, it also means we're honest with ourself, um, which in turn means we're honest with other people, right? It all starts with self. If we're lying to ourselves, we're lying to everybody around us. If I am um, telling myself I'm okay when I'm not, uh, my energy doesn't lie, right? So I can put on a brave face, a big smile. And on some level, some people may perceive that I'm happy and I'm fine. But those that are more in tune and aware of energy know that I'm lying. And so the more we lie to ourselves, the more we're lying to everyone around us, right? Um, when I think back of just my life and, and where have I lied? Because a lot of this awakening process, when we start to awaken to the external lies that we've been controlled and manipulated with, we get very angry, um, very confused, right? It's, some of us um, refer to it as the dark night of the soul. It's, it's like everything's a lie, right? But I also understand that um, that triggers us because deep down, we know we've all been lying to ourselves our whole life. We've all been lying to ourselves and that's probably a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow. Um, but the more you can start to see that, it starts to really liberate you because I'm learning that it is freaking okay to not be okay all the time. We don't have to pretend, right? There's a saying that probably a lot of people have heard um, that was sort of ingrained into my brain at a young age and it's fake it till you make it. And I remember being a kid and at first when I heard it, it like didn't make sense because I was like, why would we fake it? Like, I don't understand that. But um, like any good program or any good phrase that you hear over and over, um, just started to believe it. And I was like, oh, I like this fake it till you make it, right? But what I learned the problem is, is that um, you get so stuck in the faking you never make it you're faking and you're faking and you're faking your whole life and many of us are still faking it and we haven't made it <laughs> and I'm not sitting here telling you I've made it but in a sense I feel like I have just because I've awakened to the fact that I was still faking a lot in my life and um faking a lot in the sense of being honest about how I feel about things, what I think about things, um, my journey, right? Um, being honest, being honest with yourself, being vulnerable, allowing yourself to break down when you have to break down, allowing yourself to scream when you have to scream. And I'm not saying we project these things onto people. There are healthy ways to release and express without projecting onto other people. And the more aware you become of self in this journey, um, the more you find tools that allow you to healthily express these emotions um, because you don't want to project them onto people. You are aware enough of how 
energy um, is transferred and how it affects everyone and everything. So you start to realize that, oh, I don't want to project this energy out, but I do know I need to get it out somewhere, somehow. Um, for me, you know, I've talked about in other videos about anger being a very uncomfortable emotion for me to feel, express, be on the receiving end of. And um, I'm finding that dancing is a great way to get my anger out, like, um, like punching in the air and just like really allowing the energy of that anger to flow through me without resisting it and letting it out, but in a positive way, I'm dancing. So it's almost like going into kind of a trance state in a way that there's not really any one particular thing I'm angry about. Sometimes um, I'll see multiple things that happen throughout my life that it's like, oh, here's where that, here's, here's where that root of that emotion of anger is coming from, right? So it helps me to see what I'm releasing. And other times I have no idea where it came from, but I don't sit there and analyze it. I just understand that it's energy that needs to come out. So again, it's not about like, whose anger am I feeling? Whose emotion am I feeling? Whose am I getting rid of? Like the way I see it is I'm always purging um, on some level, the collective's energy because we're all super connected, right? But if, the, if it's the collective's energy, it's mine too. So I... I find so much more power in not blaming these external things. I have found that by still putting blame on being lied to by the systems and um, everything they've done wrong, that drains, that drains my energy field because I'm still giving my power away. I'm understanding from a very, very higher perspective that I came in knowing that this was the game. I knew I was coming into a lie to uh, a fear-based, illusionary place of lies, but what are lies, right? To me, lies are just truths that have been suppressed and hidden and manipulated. Um, it's only a lie until you set it free and then it's the truth. It's just like light and dark, right? Things are only dark until you shine light on them, right? And this is that polarity duality that Sam and I talk about on the earth plane, which is such a thick, strong illusion that we've all fallen for. Um, so back to really how I started this, being real. Being real is um, a huge part too of becoming confident, which is that first video, solo video I made. Um, I'm learning that being real is synonymous kind of to being confident um, because the more real I allow myself to be everywhere I go, the more confident and more comfortable I am in my own skin, no matter who's around me, no matter what the environment, no matter what experience I'm going through, I'm allowing myself to be real, to be vulnerable, to show up for myself in the way that we all want other people to show up for us, right? And then I'm able to authentically show up for other people, just as I am right now. Um, that's being confident to me. Like that's being, that's like owning all my truths. That's owning my light, which we all love to own our light, our love, right? But we have a hard time owning our darkness, our shadows, our pains, our traumas, our parts of our personality that we perceive to be bad or negative or wrong. Those are the parts that we have to meet with compassion and love and allow them to express, to, 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 to be free because that's how we release them, right? That's how we release these things that feel negative and low, like low vibrations, right? These things that as we awaken to them within us, we're trying to quickly fix it. Like we're always trying to like, all right, how do I fix it? How do I get rid of it, right? And that, that's part of the, the evolving process, the awakening process, I believe. Um, but there's an there that's still to me coming from ego because ego wants to fix and control everything where the higher self is like, just let whatever it is that's coming up be, just let it be. That is one of the hardest things for us in the human avatar to do is to just allow things to be. And the more I understand energy, the more I realize how powerful that is to just allow everything to be right it, it it 
gives us this power of no longer being drained to a fix things externally to us, but also even the things internal in us, right? Um, the more I've tried to fix or change my thoughts and my emotions, the more I realized I'm faking it till I make it. That's faking it, right? Everything, when you can really start to see that everything is just energy, your thoughts are just an energy, your emotions are just an energy. That's it. We can't see it. So we can't quite comprehend exactly what energy is, but energy is literally what makes up everything on this earth plane. It is the energy behind everything that we see physical that has created that physical thing or that physical experience. It's all energy driven. So when you can start to understand that your thoughts and your emotions are just an energy, like that's what I tell myself as they come up, it's just energy. That's not faking it. That's, that's realizing it's just energy, but it's also me acknowledging what's ever coming up and allowing me to either feel it or think it until it's ready to, to, to release on its own. Naturally, it naturally dissipates. I'm learning more and more every day that these things naturally dissipate the more we allow ourselves to let them be. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Love that song um, because like, whoa, is it spot on? Um, whisper words of wisdom, right? Like my higher self is always whispering these words of wisdom to me when I start to fight something internally or externally. Um, and it's like, oh, once I can really get into that energetic level of what I, perceive or believe to be acceptance that's letting it be that's not the same to me as um tolerance to me that's a totally different energy because tolerance is something that I have practiced my whole life I've been very tolerant of people situations I was tolerant of the fact that I was diagnosed with 50 gajillion autoimmune disorders I was tolerant right but underneath that tolerance, there was this like sticky, icky feeling of like, yeah, no, I'm faking it. Like, I'm just tolerating it because that's what I think I'm supposed to be doing. That's how I think I have to show up for myself. Um, that's how I think I have to show up for other people. I'm just going to tolerate it. I'm going to tolerate it. But I'm actually going to ignore the emotions and feelings that are coming with whatever it is that feels disempowering. I'm just going to shove them down and I'm going to fake it till I make it. But then I never really make it because then we spend so much of our life faking it, faking everything, faking that we love our job, faking that we're happy, um, faking that we've accepted a diagnosis, faking, 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 faking we are lying to ourselves. And then when we find out that pretty much everything out there has been a lie, I mean, literally everything has been a lie on some level. Um, it's been manipulated to control us. Um, Every system, like we've talked about, education system, the financial system, the healthcare system, the um, every system, everything we go out and buy on the shelves that say this is what's in the product. There are lies upon lies. And that is one of the hardest things to awaken to in this awakening process. And for me, I believe we have such a hard time with that because we really understand on a deeper level that we've all been lying to ourselves pretty much our whole life, pretty much our whole life. And that's where I'm, again, this is where I use the external matrix as my mirror because it's also, it's such a mirror of my internal mind matrix. It's all the same thing to me. There is no separation. Like there literally is no separation. That's seeing through the illusion of the separation. So I use that as my mirror. Why am I so pissed that I've been lied to in all the systems? Um, because I've been lying to myself for a very long time. Very, very long time. Um, right down to like, let me put a whole full face of makeup on. And this is probably going to trigger a lot of females. And that's not my intention. It's just another way that I realized I was faking who I was on the outside, right? Um, right now, as you can see, let's see, I haven't showered yet this morning. Gonna be real with you people. I brushed my hair at least to jump on camera, but it's, it's, yeah, I have zits on my face and I have no makeup on. Right. And I, I kid you not for me, um, makeup was a huge thing that I started in like middle school. 
um, and I wasn't even really allowed to wear it. So I would put it on at school. Oh, good Lord. Like what a, what a process. I'd put it on at school, have to wipe it off before I got home, this whole freaking thing that I would do. But I literally thought I needed it. Like I did not feel pretty without it. And why wouldn't I? Because look at everything out there. Look at how society tells females they have to look and dress and and all this, right? And I'm not saying it's just females. Like they do the same thing to men. They tell men not to express emotions, right? This is our societal programming of the matrix. And the more I started becoming aware that it's literally in everything and how it's affected my life, that's when I take a step back and go, okay, um, again, what was my intention of wearing the makeup? What was my intention of looking a certain way? It was to be accepted. It was to be loved because I believed I needed these things to look pretty and I needed to look pretty to be loved, right? Crazy. It's not crazy. It's just part of our human programming. But um, I literally haven't worn makeup now, probably oh, in at least two years, there may have been a couple little times where I fell back into, in fact, yes, I'll be honest. Um, when I did my first two psychic fairs, I put on makeup. Now I didn't put on a full face of makeup like I used to, but there was still that part of me that was like, oh, I, I'm I'm going to do this event in front of all these people. So I have to look a certain way. Mm, bullshit. I realized by the last fair I did, which was just in May, I went just like this. I I went just like me, just the natural avatar that I chose for this life. I I realized there was still a part of social programming in me that was making me feel like I needed to show up a certain way with a certain look with a certain energy with this with this and again I feel like too as many of us are awakening and stepping into these healing roles practitioner roles doing uh, uh, of service to other people there's still this program of how we're supposed to show up, um, how I should show up as a coach, how I should show up as an energy healer, as a, as a energy reader. Um, and I'm realizing that's still part of the program because again, we just have program on top of program in this existence. And it's another program um, for me. This is why it's important that Sam and I are doing these videos because this is me. This is me. You're getting me right now. Um, you are getting what you would get if you were at my house and I was just sitting and having a conversation. This is this is me. This is this is me at this now moment in time. But this me continues to evolve and change. Right. That doesn't mean that um, you know when you're getting me. You're only getting this one version of something. You're getting this constantly changing, evolving version. Like from the time I start this video to the time I finish it, I've evolved through it just by being able to express. So you're getting me as you're watching me evolve. You're watching me evolve through, through all of this. Um, so showing up for self, being real with self, allowing self to feel it all, think it all, express it all, sit in all of it for as long as self needs to feel they need to sit in it, right? There's no, um, there's no time frame. There's no, there's only a time frame if you put a time frame on it. Um, I personally am breaking this illusion of time more and more. Um, it's funny because I kind of, I had set the intention in maybe like February to break time. And then um, in March, my beautiful business partner did a, um, she does moon, every month she does moon clearings and readings for the full moon and um, the new moon every month, which check out our website because it's a $30 subscription and what she does is badass, well worth it. Um, so check that out if it's something you're interested in. But she did, um, a reading clearing for me in March and the word that came through from the moon that I was resetting was time. And I knew exactly what that meant. And since then, every day, uh, time is becoming more and more of an illusion to me. It, it truly is. Um, so 
there is no time on, on your evolutionary process. You don't have to rush anything. Um, you don't have to be further than where you are right now. There, there, there's no, there's nobody up there down here looking and saying you should be further along on your journey right now, right? Like you, you're where you are because that's where uh, you've chosen to be. So there is no rush on evolution. That's why I say with everything that's going externally, this, this loud chaotic upheaval of energy that's coming to the surface, um, it's gonna keep happening for a long linear time for people that are still very trapped in a linear time mindset. It's gonna keep happening um, for quite some time because there are billions of us on this planet that are going through our own individual evolutionary shifts. So it, it's this is not gonna happen overnight. Um, it's been happening for a long time already. Um, but as you awaken, you 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 think it's all just happening now and it's coming. There's more to come. There's always more to come. There's always been more to come. There's always going to be more to come. Um, so just, you know, the more we accept that and accept our own process, the, I don't know if the word is easier, but I do feel the easier it is to kind of go with the flow of it because we realize it's flow, it's, it's energy. And the more we do resist it or try to change it, or get stuck in it where we're trapping the flow of energy where we're actually trapping it and we're trapping it in the things that we don't want to be in anymore that's the irony where we're um just like with my whole anger thing it's like i hated being on the receiving end of anger since i was a kid so somewhere along my teenage years i know i was extremely angry but somewhere along that path i started to shove it down and then I got into an extremely abusive relationship when I was about 17, um, from 17 to 21. I was in a very, very abusive relationship in every way, shape, and form. And it's ironic because, of course, then I was on, I was on the receiving end of anger every day, every day. Here I'm afraid of anger. And I jump into an abusive relationship with someone who was very, very, very angry. and. After I got out of that relationship, I realized that I suppressed my own anger that whole time. And so all of the years after that, up until when I started to awaken to self, um, I, was, I trapped that energy in me, which as I've discussed in other videos, um, definitely acted as a catalyst for all of the, the, the diseases I created in my body. Um, absolutely. It helped to manifest those things um, a lot faster because there was so much anger that had been projected onto me and around me. And now that I understand energy transference and I was so afraid to react to that anger that I in turn started becoming very angry inside, very angry. But guess what I did? I lied to myself. I faked it. I faked it till I made it. But where did I make it to? I made it to a very diseased, suffering human, which I can also tell you was a gift because that was my awakening. My, my, my physical body and my mental state had reached a rock bottom. And we all have different rock bottoms, um, but I had reached a rock bottom and it finally woke me the F up. So it's a gift, right? That abusive relationship I was in was a gift because what I've learned from that is self-love, self-compassion. I'm getting chills as I'm saying it because my higher self has told me that that abusive relationship was, um, I was guided actually into that by my higher self. And that may not make sense to people because people probably have a perception of higher self, like higher self is, is all love and light. Yeah. Yeah. Higher self is all love and light, but higher self understands that sometimes we need to go through human experiences that are uncomfortable to the ego to find and reconnect with that love and light. 
And um, my higher self has recently told me as this, the energy of this past relationship is coming up for me. Um, and when I say the energy of it, like the anger of it, um, I had a good releasing this past week um, through dancing and, and yelling and whatever else I did. I don't quite remember, but I know it was a releasing of energy. And I know it was surrounding that relationship because um, it was shown to me that that's kind of what was coming out. And so that relationship was absolutely a gift. It was, didn't feel that way at the time, but I can use that relationship as a tool for me now, a tool that I use in teaching other people that have been in abusive relationships or are in one, but also it's, it's a living, breathing tool that I can continue to go back to retrospectively in a non-trauma way, in a non-judgmental way, but as, as like the observer, almost like I wasn't the person in that, in the relationship, because I'm not that person anymore. So I can look back at it now without the trauma and all the, the emotion of, of victim, victimization and use it as this like living tool, right? Because everything I did in that relationship was the opposite of self-love. It was the opposite. So now when I'm still learning what self-love feels like, I can go back and use that as a reference and be like, okay, I know everything I did in that relationship was not self-love. It wasn't. So now what's coming up in my life now that I'm still falling back into a pattern or where am I now actually practicing self-love? So this is what I mean about being able to use experiences um, that we've perceived as trauma, as a gift and a lesson and a blessing and a tool. And um, it's beautiful when we can start to really see these, these um, horrible experiences as a gift. And um, I feel like me expressing to all of you that I was in an abusive relationship is very important um, as part of my healing from it but also being real with all of you, being authentic, right? Because when we start watching people, like I've watched, um, as I've mentioned, other people share their stories. Um, I've watched other people that I've perceived to be spiritual teachers, right? And the human, the ego in us has a program that starts to put people on pedestals and, and level people and label people where they're at in their journey, right? So oftentimes we're still putting people that we perceive to, to know their shit like up above us because that's how we've been programmed. Every, everything, all the systems are above us. They're superior to us. So that's as the conditioned human, what we do. We go and we put people on pedestals and I've done that a good chunk of my life. And that has created so much suffering, not only for myself, but it's not fair to the people we put on the pedestals. It is so not fair to them. Because when you can start, start to see that we're all these badass spiritual beings, but we're all in a human form that, that has chosen to go through human experiences and human emotions, nobody's on a pedestal. We're all on our own journey. We're all from the same energy source. So we're all equal, but we're all individually navigating our unique, our unique paths. And we're all still feeling all of the human emotions. And that's, that's okay. That's, that's, not just okay, that's what we came down to do. So when we put people on pedestals, thinking that they're above us, thinking they know more than us, thinking they're more evolved, further along, right? And then they go through something human. Because I think I said it in another thing too, like the more spiritual I've become, the more connected I've actually been to this human experience. Connected in the sense of like allowing myself to not bypass this shit anymore but to feel it all, to think it all, to experience all of it, to allow myself to be human, to be human. I know that's not all that I am by any means, but it's what I chose for this experience. So I better honor it, right? I better acknowledge the fact that I am in a human body, right? And, and that in the human body, I want to feel human emotions. I want to experience human physical experiences. Um, so it's, it's not about bypassing any of that when you're spiritual. And I know for me, 
you know, I've had different teachers over the years, um, actual teachers that I've taken classes from, but also people just that I've listened to that I've referred to as teachers. Now I just look at every person as my teacher because everyone's a mirror on some level. So there's always something I can learn. So everybody's my teacher. But I'm talking about the people that I know egoically I started putting on these pedestals. Then all of a sudden they would, they would go through something human or they would do something that maybe I didn't, agree with or I had an opinion about and it was like but they're spiritual they're tapped in why would they fall for that why would they do that what like right so again so not fair so not fair to the other people we're putting up above us but equally not fair to us as well because nobody is above us and that's still giving our power away and perceiving that we're all we're all um on different levels to me, we're in different stages of awakenings, but I also learn, I also understand that those stages are not linear. I go through stages of awakenings every day. I go through like these stages of awakenings every day because I'm going through awakenings and epiphanies every day. I am by no means what I would refer to as awakened. I think that's another kind of disempowering label that has come out of this um, awakening process. I like for me, I like to use awakening because it's also like I'm, I'm not fully evolved, right? I'm not fully healed. By putting the ED at the end of it, it's like um, you're limiting it. It's, it's, there's a limit now on it. It's already done. That means you've reached its, its maximum potential. And I don't believe there is a maximum potential because when I start to really understand that this is an infinite universe, even this earth plane is infinite. We're believing that it's not because that's the matrix mindset to believe that we're trapped and that, that it's not infinite, but it is. And the more I realize that everything's infinite, then I can't identify with a label of being awakened. I'm not awakened. I'm awakening every single day. Every day I'm awakening. Every day I'm healing. Every day I'm evolving. Just like I said, I'm evolving through this video. So these limits these labels that the programmed human still wants to put on things is very disempowering. That's really what I, I feel it comes down to. It's not that it's right or wrong. I just find it disempowering. I find it so disempowering to have limits. Um, so back to being real. Um, I really feel like it's, it's, it's being so honest with myself about everything I'm going through in every single moment. If my body feels sick, then it feels sick. I don't always have to know where it's coming from. Why? There is a big aspect of my awakening process that I stop and ask those questions. But then there's other times where I'm like, you know what? I'm just a human that's going through something right now. I'm not just a human, but in those times, it's like, I'm a human going through something. I'm either feeling the collective, I'm feeling my own shit, or it's both, but I don't have to micromanage it. I don't have to analyze it every time because that, that makes me start to feel crazy. And if I don't get an answer right away, then the ego just resists it. And this goes back to the, okay, I just got to let it be, let it be, let it be, right? Um, so I think that's all for now. Um, again, just felt guided to jump on and talk about being real as I continue each day to learn what that means. Um, and I'm starting to find a lot of just, it's almost like this self-confidence, vulnerability, authenticity, being real. Like they're all starting to fall under the same umbrella to me. Like they're all becoming a very similar energy. Um, being comfortable in my skin, being comfortable with what I'm going through, even when it's uncomfortable and allowing myself to express it and not feel guilty and not feel um, unworthy because this is what I came to feel in, in the human form. And it is a gift. All of, all of it is a gift. Um, and I don't say that in a faking it till I make it kind of way. I'm starting to realize it is all a gift that, that like I said, that abusive relationship, it, it was, did not feel like a gift at the time, 
but I can look back now and see it for, for what it was and what it still is in a sense, because again, it's like this working tool for me that I can still use as a um, reference for how far I've come and how much I can still continue to grow. So I hope um, this made sense. And if it didn't, then it didn't. Because again, as I'm saying, I hope there's that ego part that I'm hoping you understand what I just said. And on, in the reality of it, nobody has to understand what I just said. Um, I was just jumping on to express, just to be, just to be real. Um, so I love you all. Thank you for listening for those that stuck through it and um, keep being you, keep honoring where you're at and um, have compassion for yourself because the more we really awaken to everything, self and the external, it gets very uncomfortable and um, that's okay. Just honor it, honor all of it and, and be okay with being in whatever you're in right now. Um, because everything is constantly shifting and changing and moving, right? Everything is, even when you feel stuck. It's just your perspective of what's going on that you're stuck. But the irony, like none of us are stuck. None of us are stuck. Um, you're stuck if you perceive that you're stuck in your mind, right? That's when we get stuck. But when you can really see that everything is always shifting and changing, we are as well. We just allow these energies to start moving through us a little bit um, more gracefully without trying to change them, fix them, trap them, um, try to release them, right? Like that whole trying to release stuff is, is very, um, it's paradoxical. Paradoxical? I don't even know if that's a word. It's like a paradox. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's, that trying, right? You're trying to change something that just exists, where when we just allow it to exist, whatever it is, it naturally alchemizes into something else because you're not doing anything to try to change it. Um, so if you're feeling shitty today, honor it, allow it, sit with it, feel it, be it, express it, journal it, cry about it. If you're feeling great, honor it, be grateful enjoy it, spread it. No matter what, just be and just be you because you're beautiful. Thank you. Love ya.